Berserk is some of the best written storytelling ever. Most people are aware of the fantastic war manga written by the late Kentaro Miura, who combined his amazing artwork and beautiful panels with some of the best written characters and story in any fiction. It's intense and is known to be heavy on sexual assault and other triggering themes, so consider this your warning. When I read Berserk for the first time, I was immediately attracted to the relationship of Guts and Casca in the entire story, but considering the Golden Age arc is the most iconic arc of Berserk, it also explains the reason why Casca was traumatized. Before we can cover that though, let's talk about how Guts came to be, and how he met the Band of the Hawk and Casca herself. Guts Guts' infant body was found by a mercenary band led by a man named Gambino. He was under his dead mother, presumably lynched. They first thought him dead, but realized after he started crying that he was well and alive. One of the women in the band named Shisu felt awful about leaving there and took him, promising to raise him herself. Gambino agreed and from a young age, Guts was already a part of a mercenary band. Being raised by Shisu, she took care of him until one day she came down with the sickness ravaging the area. The plague killed her, and Gambino partly blamed Guts for it. With time, Guts began his swordsmanship at six years old and started fighting with the mercenary band and fighting for his father figure, Gambino. After Guts' first fight, he went to his tent to sleep for the night. A big man named Donovan entered and told Guts that Gambino, his father figure, had sold Guts as a sex slave for the night. This traumatized Guts as he couldn't believe it was happening. The day afterwards, Guts found Donovan in the skirmish the next day and murdered him, unable to believe what he was told about Gambino. Shortly after, in another fight, Gambino lost his leg in battle and Guts couldn't help but want to be closer to him and help. Unfortunately for Guts, Gambino only became meaner as he physically and verbally assaulted Guts. Guts dealt with it for a long time before eventually Gambino made an attempt to kill Guts. Gambino also told Guts how he did sell his body out to Donovan. This angered the young Guts who fought back before Gambino fell onto Guts' sword, unintentionally killing him. This scared Guts and he knew he'd have to make a break for it before anyone found out. After being called a father murderer, he was chased by the mercenary band before he fell off a cliff. He got up with a pack of wolves to fight and after defeating them powerfully, fell unconscious. Right after he falls unconscious, this is one of my favorite panels of the entire manga. I love the way it shows Guts' pain at such a young age as he stares at the starry sky he's fallen down to see. Another mercenary band that had no clue of who he was running from found Guts and decided to save him after. They argue but decide it'd be worth it as a commander and their band needed someone to fight. They take him and along they go. Welcome to the Band of the Hawk. Four years later, Guts has a reputation as a mercenary who goes from war to war killing whoever he could for money. He swung around a huge sword that impressed many and was seen by many soldiers, murdering a strong soldier named Busuzo. Griffith and his band of the Hawk were standing by and saw this. Many of them shrugged off Guts' swordsmanship, but Griffith was impressed. As Guts left town with his money for killing Basuzo, he was immediately attacked by the band of the Hawk and sliced many up before fighting Casca for the first time, almost killing her, before Griffith approached. He asked for Guts to lower his sword, and Guts refused. This prompted Guts to attack Griffith, and Griffith, with one stroke, sliced into Guts' stomach. When Guts woke up, he was shocked to see Casca was warming his unconscious body up. Casca, angry, punched Guts' open wounds on his stomach, and Guts coughed up blood before she walked out. Griffith takes him to an open field before asking Guts to join the Band of the Hawk, even saying he wanted Guts. Guts misinterprets this as Griffith wanting to be his lover. This makes Griffith laugh before Guts begins to swing his sword at Griffith, angry. Casca was listening this entire time behind a tree and heard Griffith say how he wanted Guts. This insulted her and made her upset. Casca early on in the Golden Age arc has a hatred for Guts as Griffith takes much interest in him. Casca absolutely hates being picked on because of her gender. It absolutely insulted her every time and frustrated her as she didn't ask to be born a woman. We'll get to that later though. After Guts loses to Griffith, he belongs to Griffith officially and begins to fight for the Band of the Hawk. Later, Guts fights an apostle named Zod with Griffith. They get destroyed by him until Zod sees the behelot on Griffith's necklace. This makes Zod fly away and Casca runs to Griffith, who was injured. Reacting out of anger, she tells Guts it's all his fault that Griffith is injured. A couple days after, Guts was practicing his sword when he meets with Griffith, who shows him the behelot. Guts is intrigued, but the king and Charlotte, the king's daughter, approach and tell them that they are proud of the Band of the Hawk. This is where Griffith becomes interested in Princess Charlotte for the first time. With time, Guts becomes a commander, and this infuriates Casca. Guts overhears Griffith give his description of a friend and equal to the princess, Charlotte. This sparks Guts' desire to leave the Hawk, knowing he's not even close to Griffith's level of fame or his equal. During a fight later on, Casca is going through her menstrual cycle and suffering the struggles of being a woman. A commander named Aiden challenges her head-on for being a woman, and she almost passes out during the battle and is pushed to a cliff. Guts approaches suddenly and tells Aiden to fight someone his size. Aiden eventually gets demolished by Guts' sword and survives heavily injured on the ground. Guts grabs Casca after she starts to slip off the cliff though, 
Aiden, seeing the opening, shoots Guts with an arrow and lets out a laugh as Guts and Casca fall off the cliff together. The Band of the Hawk can't do anything but watch as the two fall into a river below. Guts and Casca's First Moments This part of the Golden Age arc is the first time Guts and Casca genuinely have a moment to understand each other. After surviving the fall, Guts quickly realizes that Casca is bleeding. Guts removes her clothes that were soaked and holds her clothes to wake her up in a nearby cave. The next morning, Guts sees Casca's woken and she immediately starts throwing things at him, including a knife. Guts is surprised and is angry at her reaction to him helping her. In Casca's eyes, she's been rescued by the one she hates the most. It embarrassed her to know she was saved in another battle, and by the one Griffith respects way more than her. During her talk with Guts to explain herself, she explains her upbringing and how she met the band. She was to travel to Midland with a noble after stepping away from her town as a young child to be a maid for the man's castle. He took advantage of her though on the way back and began to unclothe her and attempted to sexually assault her. Griffith showed up luckily with the nick of time and cut the noble's ear off. Instead of killing the noble though, Griffith told Casca to grab the sword and fight for her life. Casca fought and killed the noble with the sword, and after, begged Griffith to join the Band of the Hawk, as she didn't want to go back at all, after killing a noble and dealing with starvation at home. Griffith finally agreed, and with time, she became a noble commander who wanted nothing but to be Griffith's right-hand woman, his sword. She was in love with Griffith, and couldn't understand why Guts was so special to him. Guts finally starts to understand, before they hear soldiers under Aiden looking for them. Guts and Casca eventually set off to get away, but run into tons of Aiden's soldiers. Guts protects Casca though, and kills Aiden's brother before telling Casca to run away and let him handle the many soldiers. Casca is shocked and runs away, but not before saying, don't die, Guts. I promise to bring back reinforcements! Until then, don't die! Guts defeats and murders 100 soldiers, and falls slump over on a tree. Casca was chased by some soldiers a part of Aiden's legion before she's pushed over. While they try to sexually assault her, she grabs a nearby stick and stabs one of the soldiers in the head. Before they can attack back, Griffith and the band shoots arrows at them and they arrive to her rescue. Later, while they're searching for Guts, they only see hundreds of dead bodies. Casca cries and yells for Guts. Her growing relationship with Guts shows here, as they are nearly inseparable after they find Guts and she cries and clings to him after finding out he's alive. Something between the two of them just clicked in the cave Guts saved her in. They realized they were much more alike than they thought, and Casca chose to get over her hate for him. Griffith could only smile. Doldry and the Sex Scene Soon after, the king asked Griffith to fight for Midland against Doldry. Griffith agreed. During the Battle of Doldry, they lured the Purple Rhino Knights, Doldry's fighters, to the river. Guts defeated their leader Boscon after a hearty fight, and victory cries reigned as Casca killed Aiden inside the castle to reclaim capture of it. Midland and the Band of the Hawk had just effectively ended the 100 year war, and Doldry was finished. After, the people of Midland praised the Band of the Hawk, and a ball is held to celebrate. Guts and Casca celebrate from the rest of the group after people were flirting with Casca and it made her uncomfortable. Guts stood with Casca on the overhang of the castle as they sat in silence, but soon after he talked about how he planned to leave the Band of the Hawk. This shocked Casca, but soon after they were called inside for the announcement that they were effectively the kingdom's new knights. Griffith was knighted with the rest of the band, but Guts is set firm in his decision to leave. This surprises everyone. So well, you're just gonna leave us? Rick. Guts asks if he can just go, but Griffith puts his sword up and tells Guts that he still belongs to him until Guts wins in a sword fight. Guts agrees reluctantly, as they rush each other. Unfortunately for Griffith, Guts' sword immediately destroys Griffith's, and Griffith kneels down in shock. Guts picks up his stuff and says goodbye before walking away. Casca screams for Guts, but it's too late. Guts ignores them and follows on with his plan. Griffith, absolutely devastated and out of mind about Guts leaving, sneaks into the castle to visit Princess Charlotte. This shocks Charlotte, but Griffith eventually kisses her and starts to touch her sexually. She gives in to his advances, and Griffith and her have sex. The next morning, while leaving, Griffith is caught escaping the castle by the guards. He reports directly to the king, who starts to whip and beat him. While Griffith is being beaten underground, the band starts to get hunted by Midland to pay for Griffith's crimes. For an entire year, Casca leads the entire band, and Griffith is tortured underground until he's nothing but a weak, powerless being. Casca is fighting with the band in another fight about a year later when the Baki Raka attack. Seelot, the leader, is about to kill Casca when Guts steps in and fights Seelot for her. Casca was entirely surprised that Guts had returned, along with the rest of the band. Guts can't help but smile, knowing that he's been appreciated. While gone, he fought in adversary events and explored on his own in forest with nothing but his bag and his sword. Casca, soon after the fight, calls out Guts to come see her alone. She then attacks Guts verbally for being gone for so long. This absolutely upsets her, and she tries to fight Guts, but obviously he can just shrug her off. Guts can't do anything but stare at her while she cries. She walks close to a cliffside soon after and tells Guts to take care of the hawk before attempting to take her own life. Guts catches her and throws her back into the forest bed before yelling at her for it. After Guts comforts her and they hug, 
she kisses him, and they decide to make love to one another. This scene finally shows them reconciling and accepting their feelings for each other. Unfortunately though, halfway through, Guts has a flashback of Donovan during sex, and briefly chokes Casca before stopping and explaining his trauma to her. She understands, and they continue to hold each other and kiss after their lovemaking session. They pass out holding one another. They get Charlotte's help and sneak into the underground torture chamber where they find Griffith absolutely mauled. He has no tendons in his arms or legs. The torturer then after tells about how he tortured Griffith after locking them inside the chamber where they find Griffith torn apart. He's even kept Griffith's tongue as a token of his torture. Guts stabs him through the door and throws him down to the pit into the chamber. Unfortunately though, there are many guards on the steps ready to kill the group. Guts then goes rage mode and absolutely tears them apart. They also escape the assassins sent to attack them and escape outside the city on wagons. They found out shortly after though that they were being chased by the Black Dog Knights, huge vicious murderers hired as mercenaries by the king to kill Griffith's band. Soon after though, Wild is torn in half by Zod who shows up out of nowhere. He leaves a message to Griffith about his behelet that he dropped in the sewers earlier in the torture chamber, saying it will return to him soon. The Eclipse Casca and Guts have a moment where they talk about Guts staying or leaving, before Casca tells Guts that she has to stay with Griffith. He tells her then after that he will stay with her, but Casca says he has to leave if he truly wants to be Griffith's equal. Griffith, inside his carriage where he's being mended to, takes control and abruptly drives the carriage away. This shocks the band and they chase after him. Griffith eventually hits a rock and flies into the river in front of him before he starts crying. He sees a nearby stick poking out of the ground sharp enough to impale him. He chooses not to impale himself though and is angry at himself before Guts eventually reaches Griffith and starts to yell at him. Griffith feels in the water though and finds his behelet. After reaching out and holding the behelet up, the sky turns red and demons surround the entire band who has just arrived. They are introduced to the Eclipse, a nocturnal feast event. Four entities appear, naming themselves the God Hand, and telling the band that they are about to be sacrifices as Griffith is the proclaimed fifth member of the God Hand. They offer Griffith godlike power, and after considering his dream of being the ruler of a kingdom, but staring at his body in weakness, he agrees to sacrifice his entire band. The branding then occurs, and every member of the band is branded with a brand of the God Hand. They are then after brutally murdered, except for Casca and Guts who are dealing with their own problems. Casca's with Judo, who protects her, but dies after saving her. Casca then is left alone with demons who eventually take her to Femto, Griffith's god form. Guts is around, brutally murdering demons who killed his comrades when he's pinned down by a demon who puts him in front of Femto. Casca then falls in front of him naked, and is pushed down as Femto wants to sexually assault her in front of Guts just to spite him. Guts screams and severs his own arm with his broken sword just to escape the hold of the demon, and almost stabs Femto before being pinned down by another demon who slowly gouges out his right eye with its talon. Guts is forced to watch with his left eye as Femto assaults Casca for a little longer before Femto finishes with Casca, and the Skull Knight from earlier comes down and saves Casca and Guts. They are put outside the hurricane eye that was creating the eclipse, and Rickard is surprised, as he was a part of the squadron sent earlier to scout, who were murdered by demons leaving Rickard the last alive. Skull Knight sets Casca and Guts in front of Rickard, and tells him to take care of them before flying away. Guts After Guts wakes four days later, and immediately meets Rickard and the daughter of Rickard's mentor, Godin. The daughter's name is Erica, and she's been taking care of the mentally regressed Casca. Somehow, Femto's rape of Casca during the arc's finale, The Eclipse, leaves severe trauma on her that causes her to become a mute, and leaves her in an extremely vulnerable state. Guts is shocked, and in anger, runs off into the forest and into a valley before he stares up to the sky crying, reminiscent of the panel of him as a kid staring up at the sky after running from his old band. He's taught by the Skull Knight, who shows up randomly, that he is branded, and will have to fight demons that will follow his brand of sacrifice forever. With time, he trains and gets a new sword after a fight with a demon. The sword is called the Dragon Slayer, and is a huge slab of meat that he is accustomed to using. He then sets off without Casca for two years, and does his own thing fighting demons and doing his own business such as meeting the elf Puck and meeting Femto again, before losing his presence soon after. He fights an elf queen named Rosine and meets Farnese and Serpico and Isidro. He also meets Shirk, a witch's apprentice. Eventually, he gets Casca back and with time, protects her on his own. With his own gang of Farnese, Serpico, Shirk, Isidro, Puck, and of course, Casca. They work together and eventually with time, meet his demon baby, the son of Guts and Casca, who turns into Griffith's reincarnated form. Guts and Casca's tragic love. Obviously, in Casca's regressed form, she cannot consent to intercourse or love of any kind. This tears Guts apart while on his journeys with Casca. It also becomes his only struggle, as all he wants to do is protect Casca. Casca, in her new form, though, wants nothing to do with Guts, as a big guy with a huge sword can't be appeasing to childish, scared eyes. 
Guts even almost gives in to sexually assaulting her to appease his own pain of missing her. Casca hides away, and he has to use a rope from then on to even have her come with him. Later in the manga, Farnes can just take care of her and such, but it is rough to watch these exchanges. Guts and Casca are so spectacular to see in Berserk because it is in no shape or form a romance manga. It's a tragic story filled with pain and heartbreak just like Guts and Casca's love after her mental state has regressed. In fact, there is no love between them after, just Guts' regressed feelings, holding himself back, and Casca not wanting anything to do with him. Even later in the story, when Farnese realizes that Guts and Casca were lovers and Casca's memories is painful, as Farnese knows that Casca could never truly feel for Guts again after the pain they've been through. When Casca's memory is restored, she even screams in terror when she sees Guts, the memories from the eclipse surface. With Miura's passing, we might never have moments like these ever again. It's painful to understand that Casca may never feel the same for Guts ever again. Everything Guts does, though, is ultimately for Casca. The pain he feels is incredible, and Casca can't even comprehend it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm about to roll the outro, but I just want to thank you all again. Please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed, and check out my other stuff, and maybe even my Twitter and Twitch in the description if you want. Thank you so much for watching, and as always... Bye.